Hello everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit. Today we're here to do a overview and quick guide to the new Rust farming system update that occurred on April 2nd, 2020, pandemic style. Let me start out by showing you what we have. In case you're wondering, Thumper, why are you doing a review for farming? Well, because what I'm about to show you are a bunch of water components that effectively work the same way that the electrical components in the game work. It's just water instead of electricity. You've heard me say this before, they both work very similarly. So it makes sense that what you're about to see is what appears to be quite a bit of reused code from the electrical system to create plumbing and fluid systems. But let's see what they added. First of all, you have the water barrel, which we've always had for drinking water and filling bar uh, you know, containers of different types, but it now has an input, water in, on the top of it that allows you to fill it up with a hose. That's what the hose tool is for. Look familiar? A lot like the wire tool. And its water output can also be connected to things. Very similar. There are also two other existing components in the game that are involved. The small water catcher, which has an output and an input, and the large water catcher, which has a water out and a water in. If you've been doing any electricity, you may notice that these are analogs to batteries. The small water catcher is like a self-charging small battery in that it has a capacity of 10,000 milliliters and it catches uh, typically around 3 milliliters per minute. It's pretty slow. The large water catcher is like a large battery. It holds 50,000 and catches 8 per minute, which makes the water barrel very similar to a medium battery in that it holds 20,000 milliliters of water, but it doesn't have any way to fill itself. You have to fill it manually or through the fill input at the top. Starting to sound like electricity? Sure is. Well, there's our sources, basically batteries. Uh, you have to fill them by hand otherwise, and as you'll see soon, the water catchers don't catch enough to really be that effective without some assistance. We also received three new components. We have the fluid switch and pump, which is both a manual switch that you can turn on and off for fluid coming in and fluid coming out. So this is your on off switch for water or fluids coming from your tank. But it also has, if I switch to the wire tool, electrical inputs. It has power for a pump and it has a switch off and a switch on handle for toggling it on and off automatically. This will come in handy when we want to start automating our watering systems. Uh, this does not need to have power to operate. You can use it as a manual switch for just turning on and off your water manually. Now one thing to remember about water, unlike electricity, is it doesn't flow uphill. So I have the water barrel up above these sprinklers, but if it were down on ground level, you do need a powered pump in order to raise that water up from ground level up to any level above itself. So powering the pump does become necessary if you're putting sprinklers up on the wall or up on the ceiling, as opposed to down on the floor or somewhere below your water source. And much like electricity, we have ourselves a three-way splitter with a water in and three water outs that split evenly depending on how many are in use. Obviously a rehash of the electrical splitter code. This is handy if you want to take one water input and send it out to three water outputs somewhere or split water up evenly. Although right now, the only consumer of water is this beautiful sprinkler device. The sprinkler device has a water in and a pass through. Looks a whole heck of a lot like the ceiling lamp did. It consumes two milliliters of water per second, the same way that the lamp consumed two rust watts per second. So again, if you're familiar at all with electricity, these components pretty much are direct analogs for a lot of those same things. All right. Now the other thing you're gonna need to know, well, in case it wasn't obvious, in my hand I have a hose tool. 
That's the analog to the uh, wire tool for wiring things up. You use this in the exact same way you use the wire tool. You use the hose tool to connect water handles to each other. So I'm going to take the water output from this barrel and I'm going to put it to the input on this pump. At the moment, this pump happens to have power, but which will come in handy here because these sprinklers are a little bit above it. Um, I'm going to take this output. I'm going to run it into the sprinkler. Now the pump is not required here, and here's a good way to tell. The game actually warns you. Let me throw a sprinkler up on the wall here. The game will actually warn you if your output needs a pump. So if I take the water out from this catcher, and I go up to the input here, see how it says connection requires pump? That means the sprinkler is too high above the water source for gravity to work here. And so you're gonna need a pump if you wanna make that connection. It warns you of that, so that's handy. All right, so let's talk about flow rate because in electricity, we had a certain amount of output, so a maximum number of devices you could have on a string, depending on what your source was. And then you had a maximum flow rate out of the battery for how much you were consuming of actual electricity. Well, water works in a similar way. And I will warn you, today is April 4th, 2020. Peace and love, peace and love. I am warning you with peace and love that the numbers in the guide here are incorrect. I'm sure these will either be corrected at some point to what they are supposed to be, or which is lower or higher in some cases, or they'll fix the devices. Here's some examples. The large and small water catcher in their description say that they can provide 20 milliliters per second of water. They do not. They provide six. When you put the hose tool on them, they actually say six on their output. That's what they can provide right now. See, six, there. Oh, sorry, this one says 12. My bad. Uh, this says six. This one can put out 12. And the water barrel up here, which if we look in the description, says it can put out 10. It actually has 12. So small is six, medium is 12, and the large also says 12. But let's watch what happens when we hook these things up. Uh, I hooked up the water barrel, but let me change that because I'm gonna do these in order for you. So if we take our source of six per second, and we hook it up to our pump here, If each of these consumes two, you would expect three of them to turn on. I've got a dozen lined up here for this test, but you'll see you should expect three to turn on. I turn it on. Sure enough, three of them turn on. If it were putting out 20, 10 of these would turn on. So we know the small water catcher description is wrong because this is six, not 20. All right. Now, let's hook up the water barrel, which has 12. So there it says 12. Its description doesn't uh, match either because its description says it can put out 10. If it were really 10, we'd expect five to turn on. The tool says 12. I'm expecting six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ha, ha, ha. See, we can all count. So the hose tool in this case is not lying. There is actually 12 units of water going through there. The description is lying. It is not 10, it is 12. All right. And finally, let's hook up the large water catcher real quick here. Have any water? It's got a little bit of water, just enough to try this out. Water catchers do not catch water very quickly. And you can see here, it also says 12. Turn it on. Do we get 10 sprinklers or do we get six? One, two, three, four, five, six. We get six and therefore, large water catcher description is incorrect. It is not 20 per second. It is 12 per second, just like the hose tool tells you. So for now, I would say trust the hose tool. It seems to be a more effective piece of code. Uh, the descriptions are incorrect. 
Okay, are you bored yet? Good, perfect. Let's talk about output of these sprinklers in watering for your plants, because that's what they're used for. And here we're gonna see some very interesting behavior. I'm gonna throw down a planter box, okay? Now I'm gonna grab a sprinkler. I'm gonna put it right next to this planter box. And, uh, shit. Right, you can't do that because it covers the freaking handle, and then you can't hook the freaking thing up. But, if I set it this way, I should be able to reach the handle. There we go. Water input. Now here again, I'm going to show you uh, some interesting behavior that does not match up logically. Uh, they may fix this in the future. Just for grins, I'm going to... Uh, there's a jug to fill this up so it's full 20,000 milliliters okay and now let's take a look at this planter it says it has zero out of 9,000 milliliters of water now you can't this isn't a tank you can't put water in and take it out but it tells you how much it is watered so when I turn this sprinkler on and I'm gonna set a timer here real quick so that I can match this up to the video later but watch as I turn this on and start now, this sprinkler is consuming two milliliters per second. And I'm gonna let it run for one minute. In the course of that one minute, you're going to see it drain 120 milliliters from the barrel, just like you'd expect if you know how to do math. If you know how to do math, 60 seconds times two milliliters per second equals 120 milliliters, and that's how much it takes out of the barrel. However, there is an interesting little bugaboo that happens right now, and you will see that the water indication on this planter is going up significantly faster than that. We're only 42 seconds in, and it's already at 120, and now 150. And when we get to the one minute mark, it will actually be at 180. That's the interesting part of this. Turn this off real quick. That's the one minute mark. You can see in one minute, we put 180, or the equivalent of three milliliters per second, into this planter. And just to prove that I'm not lying, because I'm not a lion, I'm a rabbit, got 19,882. So uh, 118 units, almost 120. I stopped it just like a half a second too early, forgive me. So it does in fact consume two milliliters of water per second. So 120 units per minute from the barrels or water catchers, different sources. But it actually outputs the equivalent of three milliliters per second when you're measuring how much the volume or the indicated amount of water in the planter has gone up. Now, when you're doing farming, there's one other important thing you need to know about this. The sprinkler unlike you would expect in the real world, is very efficient. It does not waste water. If I take two planters and I put one on either side, and now I turn this on, watch what happens. 15, not 30, in 10 seconds. 15 each. And in another 10 seconds, 30. It splits its water evenly with the number of consumers, in this case planter boxes, that are in range of the sprinkler. Its range operates very similarly to that of a Tesla coil. Can you imagine that they would reuse Tesla coil code for this? Shocking, they reuse Tesla coil code for this. Anything that's within one foundation range of this sprinkler will receive water, but it's apparently coded in such a way that it shares that output evenly with all of the planter boxes. So if I put six planters boxes around this, in one minute, all six will receive 30 milliliters of water, 180 divided by six. Here, we see that in one minute, we have 90 in each of them, 180 divided by two. 
This is important because it's still consuming the same amount, 120 uh, milliliters per minute. It's still outputting the same amount, 180 milliliters per minute from the perspective of the water content of these planters. But it gets divided evenly among every planter box in its range. And if you had two sprinklers here, like if I put another one on this side, this planter box would go up by uh, not double, because if this one's splitting between here and here, but the sprinkler over here would be putting all of its water into this one. It's very quirky. It's not like you would expect in the real world where the water that's spraying off here and flying in my face is just getting wasted. It's not getting wasted. It's animated like it's getting wasted, but this thing is delivering 100% of its water evenly into the available planter boxes. Now you need to keep this in mind when you're setting up your farm because if you're setting up your farm thinking, you know, I want to have all of my planter boxes get watered faster, then you basically need to have one sprinkler in range of every planter box to get that maximum output. Plus, you could put multiple sprinklers around and increase the watering rate. So let me show you that here. Oh, by the way, uh, you'll find all the sprinklers and stuff under the electrical menu because eh, why the hell not? So let's demonstrate that. I'm going to kill these off. And then what we'll do is uh, grab a planter box. Box of the planter. And need these. I'll set down planter box. And then I will set down sprinklers where I can actually reach them to plug them in. I said plug them in, didn't I? Yep, see, I'm an electrical guy. But hey, it all works the same way, so if you're an electrical person, me, me, I'm a plumber too. All right, go ahead and plug this in. Now we got four sprinklers on here. I'm gonna crank this up. Each of these will consume 120 per minute from the barrel. Each of them will output uh, 180 per minute. So you can see, instead of it jumping by 30 in 10 seconds, it jumped by 120 in 10 seconds. 10 seconds later, we'll have 240. So more sprinklers equals faster watering. But again, they're dividing their output by the number of planter boxes in their range. So if I wanna take this guy from putting 30 per 10 seconds into here and have it put only 15 in, I can drop this planter box and now it's gonna get some. It's also in the range of this guy. It's also in the range of this guy. So instead of getting 15, it's getting 30, and it's getting 15 from there. It's not in the range of this guy, so he's not sharing his water with this planter. But this guy's picking up water from the other sprinklers. So there's gonna be a lot of math involved when we start building advanced automated farming here. I haven't gotten that far yet, so you'll have to bear with me. Now, one thing I can tell you from doing uh, some testing earlier with actually growing stuff is that the uh, plants don't really get happy until you start getting to a water saturation level of around 50% or better. In fact, the, the saturation number on seeds... Uh, where's the seeds? Give me some seeds. Saturation number, you can see it says light 100%, water saturation 4% near the bottom there. Until that gets up to about 50%, that number stays red, and the overall happiness stays red as well until it gets up there. You can help improve the overall happiness with fertilizer, which is another whole subject I won't get into right now. But just know that uh, you're gonna want your planter to be very wet, or quite wet, quite wet. <laughs> when you start. And these sprinklers take a while. You can see that like, even with four of them going here, we're only up to a thousand milliliters here. So if you're gonna create a big grow op where you have a bunch of sprinklers strung out and a bunch of lights strung out, and yes, you can use lamps for light instead of daylight, it's gonna take a while for you to get um, these planter boxes wet. And one thing you'll notice, and I'll demonstrate real quickly here, uh, a water jug carries 4,000 milliliters. Watch this. Right now it's at 534. 4534. The entire 4000 goes into the planter box in one shot. So manual watering is 
far more efficient than watering with sprinklers. However, with these new seeds the way they are, you can be spending anywhere from 45 minutes or an hour to getting them to grow up and up to two hours, depending on your watering, fertilizer, and light conditions in some cases. Um, so they consume water. It tells you right here it consumes six milliliters per minute. This particular seed does. So the water level in this planter is gonna go down. So one of the things that we will wanna account for in building farms is that you'll want to make sure that you have a way to replenish that water level and keep it above that 50 percent and as far as you can towards full because the higher this water level is the higher the saturation number will be and then the higher saturation number the better these plants are going to grow and you can see might be dumping that barrel of water on here that water saturation level shot way up and now that thing's a lot happier overall happiness of this seed is 67 percent that's pretty good its health is increasing every minute so why the hell do we care about sprinklers well you know i don't know about you if you don't want to run around and dump fresh water jugs on everything all day then the sprinklers can be used to top off the water levels of these uh planter boxes so we'll explore some of that more in the future i think i've rambled on for plenty long at this point but just to review, your water sources are the small water catcher, the w large water catcher that I have down there, and the medium barrel, or the, calling it the medium barrel because it's like a medium battery, the water barrel. Small is the small water catcher, 10,000 milliliters, barrels 20,000 milliliters, the large catcher is 50,000 milliliters, that's like your small, medium, large batteries. They all have output handles, they all have input handles, the catchers generate their own water, but extremely slowly like extremely slowly like barely enough to water one plant so if you're gonna get your water from water catchers uh you best be ready to put like about 50 of those fuckers on your roof just how it's gonna work out and then uh unless you're gravity feeding your sprinklers which you can do if you put the water source above the where the sprinklers are and the sprinklers work on the floor and the wall and the ceiling all the same so I just put them on the floor here. Then you will need a pump. And if you need to pump water uphill, it will need water. Otherwise, you can just use it as a valve or a switch. Really, a valve, because it's plumbing. Get over it. Uh, you can see I have a rusty clock set up here. I was playing with a rusty clock earlier to have it on like a one minute timer. So it'd water for a minute, turn off for a minute, turn on for a minute. Um, there's nothing special about a minute. That was just me playing around. We'll get back to more of that probably in future videos. So you have your water sources, you got your hose tool, your hose tool can plumb into the switch or valve, which can also be a pump if you need to pump water uphill, and you've got the splitter, and you've got your sprinkler, each of which will consume 2 milliliters of water per second or 120 per minute, but will output 180 milliliters of water for your uh, planter boxes, which will be divided evenly among the number of planter boxes that are in range of the sprinkler which is roughly one foundation very similar to the zapping range of the tesla coil so there it is uh oh and uh by the way indoor grow ops work great see 100 percent light so put a lamp and a sprinkler in here uh -huh. um, we'll get back to that later but that's it for now on the basics of the new farming system update as of April 2nd, 2020. Go grow some weed, or pumpkins, or potatoes, whatever the hell you want. Good luck, and don't suck. <laughs>